Welcome back, everyone. Hope you all are enjoying the EuroPython conference. I'm Anmosa Seva, and I'll be your host for the two upcoming sessions. There is an announcement for you all. Sprints are starting tomorrow. This is your chance to find more developers and collaborators for your open source projects, and also to educate people about them. So please consider listing your project and registering for the sprints on the registration page, the link to which has already been shared on the metrics channel. It's time to welcome our next speaker now, Utkarsh Mishra. Utkarsh is a final year computer science and engineering undergrad, and he has been working in the field of machine learning and deep learning domain for the two years now. He's currently working as a machine learning developer at Qual Infotech. How are you, Utkarsh? Hello, Anmol. From where are you joining? Uh, I'm currently in Ahmedabad, India. Nice. So today, Utkarsh will be talking about using Python and Flutter for coloring and enhancing old photos. Sounds interesting. Uh, so Thank over you. to you now, Utkarsh. Good luck for your talk. OK. So hello, everyone. I am Utkarsh, and I will be I'm here to present my talk on Python and Flutter application for coloring and enhancing old photos. So first about uh, as Anmol told you about me, uh, and I'll just be giving a small introduction about me also. So I'm a machine learning developer as well as a final year undergrad student. And I work as a company and an ML developer at Quali Infotech. It's an RPA based service, uh, service company. And my major technical skills are in deep learning, machine learning, and a little bit about in Flutter app development and data science, data analytics. So first of all, what are photos? The most important question. So um, for me, photos are basically some kind of an um, uh, computer science language. You can see it, it is an image. So an image that represents some external form of person from a past, right? So it basically communicates uh, any past incidents or activities to us, reminding us of those memories they can be melodious also they can be unhappy also so that goes on so next is what are black and white images so black and white images or black and white photography can be considered much more subtle and uh, are less uh, less realistic than colored photography right and most of those black and white photos or we can even call them monochromatic photos are uh, inter are some what interpretations of their subjects and they also uh, are a little bit about an abstract from the reality like an abstract image from a reality that is represented in colors or the shades of gray right that ranges from zero and to one to fifty five that's mostly about computer science right so, and they sometimes also feels somewhat empty so that's why we think about coloring images because they look great and we feel some and these colors also uh, gusses emotions different different so there are like many techniques a few of and the major use techniques for coloring these black and white or the monochromatic photos are like by throw hand, by hand that has been done for thousands of years and the second one is through adobe photoshop that has been uh, that is been currently used and is being vastly used nowadays and that's and that takes a technology to our technology or i can say a system to implement but then the most important question that raises here is why do we need machine learning for this thing like these most of these techniques uh, requires like uh, requires a lot of time and are very labor intensive also so to reduce time we use machine learning because using machine learning through models and those stuffs uh, the our photos can be colored in a matter of seconds or max to max to a minute it won't take longer than a minute if we have a single image so first of all like uh, uh, Basically, my application that I have to build is a Flutter application. The front end is in Flutter, and the back end, all the processing, conversion, image conversion is being done through an API, which is built in uh, Python Flask. So this is the flowchart of an API, uh, flowchart of the API, and we'll be discussing 
each of these segments in a later okay so first of all is about basic introduction related to machine learning uh, machine learning deep learning and the model architecture so the first question that rises in our mind is what is deep learning hmm? and what can be the difference between a deep learning architecture or a machine learning model or an ai model also so basically an ai what is the work of an ai so ai tries to uh, mimic human activities or human decision making right and machines are a uh, machine learning is a subset of ai and it basically contains all those algorithms and techniques to make uh, to uh, make uh, to train a machine on a data and then do those uh, decision making things whereas deep learning is also a sub is a subset of mach even machine learning that makes it a sub subset of ai and it tries to solve more complex problems which are generally related to they can be related to text but are more generally related to uh, images sounds or some unstructured kind of data like language uh, language processing and other stuff so the first thing that comes is like deep learning like right? so there uh, there should be types so we will be discussing about only three or four ones like the feed forward neural network rcnn cnn or uh, recurrent neural network convolution neural network and uh, about an or encoder okay so the first one is a feed forward neural network so basically in a feed forward neural network there are some uh, very basic kind of neural networks and we have an information flow from an input layer to the output layer and mostly they contain just a single hidden layer along with this input and output layers so most of the time they also don't require back propagation and um, they are mostly used in these facial recognition algorithms that we can use in computer vision and image processing stuff so next is a uh, recurrent neural network it's kind of a tricky one so in the recurrent neural network um the output from the previous neuron or we can call it as as a node also is being passed or uh, as an input to the next or the uh, to the next node or the next neuron these uh, mo uh, these uh, network architectures are uh, very helpful as they take very less amount of memory so they are very helpful in building uh softwares that require machine learning as well as very low memory like chatbots so these uh, so these technologies can be used in building chatbots text applications uh, language processing uh, speech pro uh, speech and uh, audio processing those stuffs next and the thing that i have used is a convolution neural network it's also called as connets or cnn and they are mostly used to analyze imagery data mostly image image related data we can also compare uh, use audio and speech data also but mostly they are used for images they try to extract features from the image or the audio signal data by performing some sequences of convolution pooling operations we know so basically the cnn contains two important things convolution operation and a pooling operation you know that so before going to convolution pooling operation i will just be telling you about kernels so in uh, these kernels are also sometimes called as convolution matrices or filters are like small small matrices uh, two two dimensional matrices and they are used for blurring sharpening a uh, sharpening an image or an edge detection to get the images from an image so basically we try to accomplish uh, so basically we accomplish this by doing some convolution operation between the kernel and the original image like as the example is been given there is some kind of an animal most probably a mouse uh, i think so it's a deer so an edge detection kernel has been applied and it, it shows the edges in the image so the next is a convolution operation that we get a lot so basically these convolution operations are the main thing that uh, are used to extract the, some these feature maps they do what they like uh, they multiply individual elements of uh, yeah, individual elements in each cell or in each pixel by the kernel and then sums them up to get the output feature you can see they're using the zip file uh, zip file 
let's uh, i have used tensor 2 so i'll just be giving an example also so in the uh, con 2d um, in the con 2d we can use uh, using tensorflow we can do this by uh, using keras uh, that's a tensorflow dot keras dot uh, con 2d layer and we have you i have in the example i have used 32 filters so there are like 32 different different kinds of kernels and each of the, them have a size 3 comma 3 means uh, uh, have dimensions they are of two dimension and have size 3 cross 3 and it mean it has given the padding as same that means the uh, that means the input image and the output image after the convolution also we can get the same images we have also applied relu activation function and a little bit about the regularizer so next is and pooling uh, a pooling operation so pooling operations are can be classified uh, can classify into two types like max pooling and average pooling but before that uh, ma pooling can be called as some kind of down sampling of feature music they uh, we can just say that they down samples a feature images to get a summarized or a compact form of our feature maps like the images or the data is being in feature maps when we pass a pooling layer Uh, when we pass it through a pooling layer, it reduces its size and compacts our data. Also, it also reduces the number of uh, computational variables that also increases our uh, that also decreases our time complexity. Or the pooling. So the pooling layer also uses the tensorflow dot keras from the tensorflow dot keras. And for the max pooling, we can use keras dot layers or max pool two D. We are just dealing with the two D image two uh, D uh, image vectors only here. Two D tensors. And for the average pooling, we can use keras dot layers dot yeah, average pooling tool. We are using a pool size of two means like the small vector size in the last image. That's uh, that's the size of that kernel. We can also call it a kernel or filter kind of thing. So that we, in this case we call it as a pool size. So we can also have a stride, a uh, stride of three uh, two by two. That means the cell will be shifting two twice. In most most of the operations. The pool in most of the layers pooling uh, by by applying two by two pool size and two by two or stride, we can reduce the number of parameters to half, as well as we can only get the important structures. Add layer. So basically, we have this add layer. In add layer, it's like um, assume that we have two matrices and we have performed two um, addition between the two matrices. Their individual elements, uh, which have the same locations, have been added up. So this layer also performs the same operation. So next is an auto encoder. So basically, auto encoder is a type of artificial uh, neural network. We can also call it artificial neural network, ANN, and it tries to learn the data from. No, it tries to learn from the compact representation of the data. Uh, just like an auto encoder has basically has three parts: an encoder section, a decoder section, and a latent space, which we can also call as bottleneck section. And it's it sometimes has been class uh, categorized in the like it's, sometimes it's been included in the part of the auto encoder only, sorry, encoder only. So these auto encoder does what the auto encoder compresses the input data. We and the decoder tries to recreate the input image by extra adding some kind of features and uh, upsampling it and doing this from the compressed version of that data that has been given to the Uh, that has been provided by the encoder and has been saved in the latent space or the bottleneck layer portion. So this example is how we can apply an auto encoder. We just have a uh, we have an image of seven eighty four comma one and we have just down sampled the image. Then we are just uh, the bottleneck layer has number of filters thirty two, and from the thirty two we are just up sampling the images uh, to seven eighty four again. So there are like different different types of auto encoder, but we will be focusing on the one called as convolutional auto encoder. So before going to convolutional auto encoder, there is something called a skip connection, and we will be uh, I will be telling you about that. Why do we use basically the skip connection? So there is some kind of thing called as degradation problem. So in the degradation problem, whenever we have a like uh, we have a model with more uh, with a high depths or like well more number of layers. Then each passing layer, the value of those grad gradients or the values those become smaller and smaller. This reduces the performance and the accuracy of the of the model on both training and testing data. 
so that's why we try to use skip connections so that so that our data and the feature maps are not being completed are not completely lost and the data can be received like can be extracted to this fullness that's why uh the we will be using the skip connection and we have i have used the skip connection in the model like uh, because um no, sorry the skip connection is been applied to the model but from the encoder section to the decoder section across it's been across the model like section only so i will just be showing you about the architecture so we can just send the data directly send the data or we can say feature maps because it's an encoder part only so it's the matrix only matrix of the tensor so it would be uh, i would be sending the data uh, or the feature map from the bottleneck section to the decoder part and it will help the decoder in uh, more clearly it will help it to identify the decompressed image it will help in identifying the decompression of the image from the input image the, that has been provided to the decoder so next is our api flow chart again and i would be telling you about the model architecture that i have used in the colorization of the model so basically the i didn't get the same image so i just yeah, i referenced it so my model looks kind of similar to the unit architecture but it has some different variables and hyperparameters and some different amount of layers so so this is my a small about my encoding block so i used uh, i can consecutively used three uh, con2d layers to extract this feature then i have down sampled it so to compress those features and reduce its function uh, reduce the dimensionality also and the number parameters so and in the decoder section i have used the up sampling feature the first of all the data is been up sampled then a uh, bottleneck uh, or the skip connection uh, from the encoder section has been passed is been added to the first layer of the up sampled image is been added and then that in, uh, added image is being convoluted uh, try uh, is been convoluted thrice to get an output image that output also uh, an output feature map and that output feature map is then again be up sampled and then the same process goes on just like the unit architecture so apart from the unit architecture i have used other functionalities also like coloring and api and this things like gamma correction in and super imager so i have used a gamma correction somewhere here so basically what is gamma correction so gamma correction tries to control the overall brightness of that image so the, by varying the amount of gamma like the gamma is some kind of value so by am varying the amount of this gamma value we can change the brightness of the image as well as it also sometimes changes the ratio of the three color channels in the image that is red green and blue so this is how i applied a gamma correction i just put the code here so in the next uh, i have given a condition that then sometimes the original image is very small so i don't want the image to be smaller than like 500 pixels so i just gave it a condition that if the number of pixels is being smaller to 500 pixels it will be passed to another model called as uh, like for the super image resolution that will increase its resolution of that image and will return the image other if the image is higher than 500 pixels then it would actually re return the image if it is not it will go to super image resolution so what is the super image resolution thing so basically the super image resolution is are the kinds of algorithms or the techniques that tries to enhance or or increase the resolution of the image for example if i like uh, uh, take an image if i increase its width and height then the image the quality of the image should not be compromised or is been compromised in the least that's what's called as super image resolution next is our api uh, introduction to the api using flask and then flutter app development so basically what well, the first thing is an api is most of the people have learned about it no no about api so what is an api so the uh, api he is kind of a software intermediary it's an intermediate between two of the softwares that uh, and it tries to communicate between those uh, it tries to act, acts as a gateway 
for communication between both the two systems or we can sometimes also called a system and service like an exam if you take an example we have used facebook we can we have used some kind of a texting softwares like uh, sorry chatting softwares like uh, whatsapp or uh, messenger so or we if we want current weather so we have you we have seen weather so all those things uses a backend api there are like different different frameworks of a for the api in python and i have used about flask uh, so i'm just going to the flask a little bit so basically the flask is like uh, there's a the second line i have imported the flask in the second line i have used little app equals to flask in brackets underscore underscore name underscore underscore it generally means that i'm just uh, building a flask structure okay and in the main section i have applied app dot run means our app would be running and in the app dot record dot route slash hello means if when we get a server link or the url if i apply slash hello there it would return us a jsonified object or we can say a json object and it will show success hello because so i just use a basic example here so next is about the flutter so first of all the flutter uh, it has expressive and beautiful ui so basically what does this mean so flutter has many built in uh, material designs and we have like something called scripted widgets uh, we can see we can see those scripted widgets in ios um, uh, ios apps or i can say in iphones or imacs so that design it differs from the android design so that's called a scripted uh, we can call this scripted widgets or the widgets can be called as scripted node widgets it has different different types of scripted node widgets and it has some different different, uh, different types of smooth uh, like natural kind of scrolling features api features button features and it also has platform awareness like on which platform it's working on or it's running on so the next is the native uh, production and native performance so uh, the most important thing in the flutter is for what i also liked it is like uh, i can develop my app when it's running also and i just can click save button and it reloads so i will just be telling you about that in the next slide so basically it does what it is like um, it has it can be so the application uh, can be developed while running it and it can incorporate all the important features of that platforms like we uh, by by in the dart it is native uh, it's native code so i can just run a single a single code on different different platforms so then also in different different platforms it can differentiate between the, those platforms and it can and incorporate different different features that are suitable to that level of uh, that platform like in the scrolling in the mobiles we have a single finger type scroll in the web we have a mouse scroll or a button scroll right so the like this uh, we have scrolling we have navigation we have icons we have fonts and many more so next is the our like fast development so in the flutter we have two things called as hot reload and hot restart and they like in, on the click of a save button our uh, my app just reloads and it just uh, reloads the feature that i uh, like it just uh, reloads the feature that i just implemented and will be shown on my device so this helps in quickly experimenting with the ui and features and other and can help in fixing the bugs also so the, and the last thing is it's completely open source so just like python it's freely available and has many packages and those packages are called uh, in python they are called packages in dart they are in flutter they are called as plugins so the official language for flutter is dart it's kind of similar to java only uh, there is like platform availability so the, it is i said it's native so it, the, a single dart code can be run on and both the mobile devices like android io for the web also for the desktop in the desktop we have linux we have io mac os we have a uh, with uh, windows so it can run on all those in, even started in like it even started uh, working on a embedded device like ios and and uh, like sorry no and uh, embedded devices like raspberry pi and, and arduino so next it's like a, a sample code here so this is a uh, code the whenever the main function is being executed like when we run it the main function is being 
acts as a driver function. So it runs the app. That run that app contains like, like uh, in Flutter we have two types of states like the stateless and the stateful. So they, those are the main differences. So the main my app is a stateless app, and uh, it runs a material app. The material app is the complete app. The complete app would be enclosed in a material app. So uh, material app and it just go on and in the material app I just pass the class. The class contains a scaffold. The scaffold is the complete page that you guys can see and is an output. And we have an app bar. The app bar is on the top. And the app bar contains something text written here called as welcome to Flutter. A very basic one. And in the middle of the screen, we have a I have written a text called as hello world. You guys can see the code. And finally, my slides are over. And the final thing is uh, my application demo. If you guys are interested, so it's an application I built, and this is the demo. So as you guys can see, the image has been colored and we have like in the last screen, we have two features for sharing that image or we can download it. Yeah, so thank you. Right. So it was a nice talk highlighting the fundamentals of computer vision and the demo was really a nice one, Utkarsh. Thank you. Uh, so we can have a couple of questions. Uh, so people, if you have any question, please post them into the Zoom, uh, into the chat room. Uh, as of now, no one has posted. So I believe uh, if anybody has any questions, they can ask you uh, the questions in the breakout parrot room. Thanks a lot again for sure. joining and delivering uh, the talk. It was a really nice one. Thank you. And have a good day. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to present here. Thanks.